So here's another example where we work out estimating the area under graph using Riemann sums, uh, right hand in particular and midpoints, just so we get some more practice with this. So estimate the area under the graph of f of x equals 1 over x over the interval from 1 to 5 by using three rectangles and either right hand endpoints or midpoints. So here's our function f of x equals 1 over x. We're interested on the interval from 1 to 5. And we're going to use three rectangles, or three subintervals. So we'll split it up. And there's our three subintervals. And what we'd like to do is estimate the area of each of these subintervals by using a rectangle. And the question is, how do we cap it? Well, we're going to cap it either using the right-hand endpoints or by part B using midpoints. So once we split it up into three subintervals, in this case three equal width subintervals, what's the width of them? Well that would be delta x. And what's delta x? So delta x in all of these cases. What's delta x? Delta x is the length of the whole interval, which is 5 minus 1, divided by the number of subintervals you split it up into, which was 3, so that would be 4 thirds. So that's the width of each of those subintervals. Now let's go ahead and see what we need in order to figure out the right-hand Riemann sum. So our three right-hand Riemann sum with three rectangles, three subintervals, is, well, it's the width of the first one times the height of the first one. And we've been, we're using the right-hand endpoint of the first interval. We've been using x sub 1 to denote that value. Right, this was x, or 1 is x sub 0. This is x sub 1, this is x sub 2, this is x sub 3, which is, well, maybe I'll write the x sub 3 down here. That's 5. I've written x sub 1 and x sub 2 slightly above because I'm going to actually write the exact values of those, numerical values of those points, just below them in a second. So now what's the next interval? Well, over the next interval, the area of the rectangle. Let's draw these ones in. So this was our first rectangle. Our second rectangle is this one. And our third rectangle would be this one. So this is f of x sub 2. That's our second rectangle using x sub 2 as the f of x sub 2 as the height. And then our third rectangle, f of x sub 3. Now in order to work out the sum, I need to know the values of everything. Delta x I have, that's 4 thirds. I'll pull that all the way out front. Now what I need is to know the function values at x1, x2, x3. In other words, I need to know what x1, x2, x3 are. So I'm going to leave those open there because I don't have to work out those values. So what is x1, x2, and x3? Well, let's have a look x0 is 1. What is x1? Well, x1 we can get by starting at x0 and then just moving over delta x units. If I move over delta x units, I get to x1. So that would be 1 plus delta x. Or in other words, 1 plus 4 thirds. Or in other words, 7 thirds. So that's 7 thirds. What's x2? x2 is, well, starting at 7 thirds, I move over another 4 thirds. So that would be 11 thirds. So x2 is x1 plus delta x, or in other words, 11 thirds. And then to get to x3, I start at 11 thirds, move over 4 thirds, that's 15 thirds, or 5. And that's an agreement with x3 being 5. So those are our values. We have 7 thirds, 11 thirds, and 5. And the function values at each of those x values are the heights of the corresponding rectangles. So now we can just add these values up. That's f, f is the reciprocal function, so that's 3 sevenths plus 3 elevenths plus 1 fifth. Adding all those up, we get that this is approximately 1.202. So there's our right hand Riemann sum. What about our midpoints? Well, this would be m sub 3. M for midpoint, three rectangles, three subintervals. Delta x times f of 
And we have to do this for delta x times f of for the, each of the three rectangles, delta x and f of. What are the three rectangles in this case? Well, the choices are how we count the rectangle. And in this case, we want to use midpoint. So we go to each interval, take the midpoint of that interval, go up to the curve, cap it off, and that's the rectangle we're going to use for the first interval. Go to the midpoint, find the height on the curve, and use that as the rectangle for the second one, and so on down the line. So there are our midpoints. And what we usually call these midpoints is x sub 1 bar, x sub 2 bar, and this would be x sub 3 bar. So x sub 1 bar is the midpoint of the first interval. We get it by x sub 0 plus x sub 1 divided by 2. And similarly for the next ones, it's just the average of the endpoints. So the midpoint of an interval is the average of the two endpoints. Add up the two endpoints, divide by 2. There is a, a, a more intuitive way to get that. If you just look at the diagram, x1 bar should be the midpoint of the interval. We know that the full width of that interval is 4 thirds. So x1 bar should be only 2 thirds of the way along. So it should be 1 plus 2 thirds. So it should be 1 plus 2 thirds. Or in other words, 5 thirds. So that's 5 thirds. Another 2 thirds gets us to x1. Another 2 thirds gets us to the midpoint. So that's 9 thirds or 3. Another 2 thirds gets us to 11 thirds. Another 2 thirds gets us to 13 thirds. Let me rewrite that. 13 thirds. So here are the other values. x2 bar is 3, and x3 bar is 13 thirds. Those are the midpoints. That's what I wanted here. 5 thirds, 3, and 13 thirds. Now we can work out those values. It's 4 thirds. That's delta x. f of 5 thirds is 3 fifths. f is the reciprocal function, remember. f of 3 is 1 third, and f of 13 thirds, that's 3 over 13, and adding those things up, this is approximately 1.552. And so there are our values. We could double check this by using the applet. What we can do is change the function. The function is given by f, so we just need to write f of x equals 1 over x. Hit enter, that changes the function. We now want to change the interval, so I can just drag on the points for the interval, get them to match up. So that one snaps there. So we're going from 1 to 5, 3 rectangles, right hand endpoint, and there's our Riemann sum, 1.20, and we wrote, we rounded up to 2, but it's 1.20173. How about midpoint? Well, we drag the slider to midpoint. Notice that now it's using the midpoint of each interval to cap off the rectangle, and we see that the value is 1.55 and if we take a peek back, we see that that agrees to three decimal places with what our sum is. So just a quick way to check our results. We could use the applet that we used for visualization purposes. We can use it to double check our, our work as well. All right, that's it for this example.